station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Straight ahead here on DC News Now at 9, controversy over plans to arm campus police at one university in the DMV. We have reaction from students on both sides of the issue. Plus, the Frederick County Sheriff's Office is giving us a sneak peek at the body cameras that they started using this year, how they work, and their plans for them. And we'll take you to the Emancipation Parade where people brave rainy weather to celebrate. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 9. I'm Annalisa Gale. We begin with some breaking news. Virginia State Police are looking for a nine-year-old girl who they say was abducted. They issued an Amber Alert just before 7 p.m. tonight for Brielle Marie Silver. She was taken around 10 a.m. from Jefferson Avenue in Newport News, Virginia. The suspect is Bethany Renee Dawn Gould. Police say she may be traveling in a gray 2005 Mercury Mariner with a Alabama tag 32 BM568. Again, that's 32BM568. Well, earlier we had some storms, some thunder and lightning out there. As a matter of fact, we even had a few severe storms out there, one of which provided some wind damage and also some hail just to the east and to the north of D.C. Now, again, that is all over with, thankfully, but the reason why I show you that going to this is a nice little change because, well, you know what that means. We'll transition from today's storms to maybe a few more storms tomorrow. And what is causing it? A cold front. That cold front is going to be moving through and right now slicing through portions of southern Illinois with a lot of severe weather tornado watches, tornado warnings, severe thunderstorm watches, severe thunderstorm warnings. So we'll watch that closely. But tonight, just a few more lingering rain showers by the end of 10 o'clock and then by 1, clear skies and mostly clear by 4. Talk about tomorrow coming up. Thanks, Scott. New tonight, students are planning a protest at George Washington University over plans to add armed campus police officers. Our Dave Laval is talking to those who support that idea and those who are against it tonight. When George Washington University police patrol campus, they're not armed. That's about to change. University President Dr. Mark Wrighton announced last Thursday his intention to arm supervisory campus police officers with guns. It's to make the campus safer. Wrighton said in the post on the university's website in part, quote, whenever weapons are involved, unarmed, unarmed officers, officers cannot respond and must rely instead on other armed law enforcement. Some students welcome the announcement. As long as safety is the primary concern, then we're all good. I think if it'll keep students safe, then I'm, I'm sure that they're very qualified. In his letter, Wrighton reflected on shootings on other college campuses, including the University of Virginia, where three football players were killed November 13th, and three people died three months later during another shooting at Michigan State. Currently, Wrighton says only supervisory officers who complete specific training requirements, including specialized firearms training, will be armed. Still, some students say that's not enough to ease concerns. I just want people to be safe, and uh, I don't think guns contribute to safety, so that's my take. You can't really control somebody's actions, can't really control like, or gauge how anybody handles the situation, so, you know, tragedies happen when guns are involved. Protesters will gather here at Kogan Plaza Monday afternoon to let the president and university trustees know how they feel about the president's plan. That demonstration starts at 1 o'clock. At George Washington University, Dave Laval, DC News Now. Meanwhile, at Bowie State University, police are investigating reports of shots fired on the campus early this morning. They say it happened in the parking lot behind the James Proctor building. There are no confirmed reports of students being injured and no arrests have been made. University officials say there's no threat to the campus, but students are being asked to avoid the area under investigation. And in the district, police are looking for two suspects in connection to a deadly shooting this morning in the Brentwood neighborhood. Police found the man with gunshot wounds around 11 a.m. Saturday at 13th Street and W Street Northeast. That's near a Home Depot and giant grocery store. Nearly a dozen shots were fired based on markers on the scene. The victim has not been identified. 
And coming up Monday on DC News Now, we're talking to the man in charge of the DC Police Department in part two of an exclusive interview with our political reporter Leonard N. Fleming. DC Police Chief Robert Conti III talks about what it's like to fight crime in the district while taking into consideration laws being debated on the Hill. Take a listen. Well, I mean, people invoke my name all the time, man. And at the end of the day, you know, I'm going to speak the truth as I see it. I'm not a politician. That's not my role. I'm the chief of police in the nation's capital. I'm going to speak the truth whether I'm sitting here on the corner with you in Alabama Avenue, whether I'm before Congress, whether I'm sitting before city council, whether I'm on the phone in a closed meeting with city council member, I'm going to say the exact same thing. And my truth is not going to change. You can tune in on Monday at 5 and 6 p.m. for more of our conversation with the chief only on D.C. News Now. New tonight, we're learning that the Frederick County Sheriff's Office is meeting an important deadline ahead of time. A mandate in the state of Maryland would require law enforcement agencies to wear and use body cameras by 2025. And A. Simmons shows us how they plan to use those cameras. The body cam itself will make noise. The Frederick County Sheriff's Office is showing the public its new body cameras. In a YouTube video, Sergeant Richard Balsley says that the office has rolled out 127 body cameras since February, and by the end of April, roughly 170 body cameras will be deployed to deputies. Some people may question as far as how they know they're being recorded or not. Typically, on any kind of incident, the deputy is going to inform that person that they're being visually and audibly recorded. Last year, the office participated in a year-long trial period to figure out logistics before giving them out to deputies. The sheriff's office started the process early, even though the mandate isn't required until 2025 to help officers who may need help with the transition. It records the majority of the deputies' day out on the field. The cameras have a 60-second pre-event buffering before the deputy presses record, and it doesn't record audio until the deputy hits record. It provides transparency. Deputy First Class Cassie Botcher says they plan to use the body cameras for more than just investigation. It also gives us an opportunity to look back at it training-wise to see maybe what we could be do different or what we could do better. The software that... Reporting in Frederick, Maryland, Anna Simmons, D.C. News Now. And this week, Frederick County Sheriff Charles Chuck Jenkins entered a not guilty plea to charges related to an alleged plan to purchase machine guns illegally. He took a leave of absence starting on Friday. He says it will continue until the end of the judicial process. A man was hit and killed by a metro train in Arlington this morning. It happened around 1030 on the tracks at the Pentagon City Station. Metropolitan Transit Police said station cameras showed a man going on those tracks and walking into the tunnel shortly after service at Pentagon City was suspended and shuttle bus services were requested. WMATA is now investigating. And developing now, lawmakers in one state are one step closer to becoming the first to cut off access to TikTok statewide. A bill to completely ban the app passed Montana's Republican-controlled House and now heads to the governor's desk for the final signature. TikTok is owned by a Chinese tech company. The social media app has been under scrutiny over worries it could give data to the Chinese government. Montana's proposed ban is more restrictive than those in places in places on other states. The governor has yet to confirm if he will actually sign that bill.